Hey guys, this is Lieutenant Dan. Hey, I wanted to uh, make this video and share something with you that I've been working on for uh, probably the last three months. I started back in October, so I was actually I actually got done with it uh, about a month or so ago, but I thought it was time to uh, make a video. So if you recall from my last uh, version of the map that I took of Sire Bloods, I added a lot of World War II details. And in fact, what you see on the screen is now is that uh, first version. Uh, but what I did for the last uh, two, three months is that I added even more World War II data to the map. And uh, it's actually uh, <clears throat> pretty cool to play on. But um, anyway, so let me uh, let me show you what I what I did. So so here is uh, the first version, as I had uh, mentioned earlier, and I'm just going to switch over. And just to show you what the new version uh, will look like, you'll see a lot more detail pop up on the screen. So you can see a lot more textual information, a lot more lines, uh, especially on the uh, on the West Coast or the uh, the Pacific <clears throat> Ocean. Um, so let me show you what I did. So what I did was this is the old map, right? So uh, this is what I had uh, created. I I documented, uh, you know, we're Certain battles took place, uh, you know, city location, concentration, extermination camps, and so on. Um, also, there are a bunch of dots in the ocean, which uh, signified submarine activity from the various navies uh, sinking other ships. And then I documented all of the big uh, ships that were sunk um, and indicating the, the naval ship type, like the hull type. Um, so here's what I did on this next version. So I'm going to switch over. So I added, um, I actually added close to 600 more ships, um, primarily destroyers that were sunk on, on all sides. So, which makes sense that, you know, the destroyers were a big uh, workhorse for each of the country's navies. Um, also what I did was, um, I put in a casualty legend to uh, indicate how many people were killed, died, or wounded uh, during some battle that took place or during some event that took place, uh, whether it was at a given city, um, how many people were massacred, and things like that. So it kind of, uh, what, what I really like about this version two map is that it, it gives you a, um, an idea of the magnitude of the war. So you're able to look at a given area and go, wow, that many people died. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of go through uh, some examples here coming up. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the uh, information I put in regarding uh, casualties. Um, so for example, let's zoom in to like the Warsaw area. So here you can see um, um, I have the color coding, which uh, the yellow is for thousands. So uh, for example, right here, uh, 169,000 people were killed or wounded or died. Um, we have in this uh, extermination camp, uh, 320,000 died, 200,000 died here. Um, and as I kind of get over into, um, onto the, more deeper into the Eastern Front, um, the grays are, are uh, hundreds, so this would be 1,500 or 1,500, basically. Um, white is tens, so that would be uh, 40. But as I kind of get into, like, um, uh, let's go into Smolensk, so you can see red, and it just was it just blew me away on the you know how many people died in in a particular area. So we're we're talking three million people died right here, or one point five in Smolensk, another one point two in million in uh, Kursk, seven hundred thousand in however you pronounce that. So uh, here's like five hundred and fifty some odd thousand. So it really started opening up my eyes like, wow, you know, all these people, you know, how many people just died in, in a certain spot? 
Um, it really, it really made the map come to life for me anyway, after I put this in, after I put this, uh, information in. Okay. So let's take a look at the, uh, the Mediterranean. So here's the old map or, you know, the first version, um, a good, good amount of detail, a lot of submarine activity. There's some, you know, ships that were sunk and so on. Um, but here's a good example of, uh, how many more ships I had added. So you can see a lot more detail was added. Um, again, giving uh, casualty counts in uh, Northern Africa, um, as well as in Greece and, and so on. Now you'll start to notice uh, some other lines that I, that I added uh, to indicate uh, naval battles. <clears throat> so this is a, a, a small example, but so if I kind of zoom over here, let me zoom in a little bit. Basically, what I did is I, I connected the sh dots uh, of the ships that were sunk during a particular battle or an operation. In this case, um, two cases. So here at the naval battle of Casablanca, you know, 930 some odd sailors died. And uh, each dot, um, so during uh, Operation Torch, just before uh, Operation Torch were... Allies landed uh, in three different places on northern Africa. They uh, sank a bunch of French ships. Um, so I have uh, the types of ships that sunk. You can see a lot of them were uh, destroyers uh, with the uh, the DD classifi uh, hull classification. Um, so, anyways, so I connected those dots just to kind of give you an idea of kind of where those ships sunk. And uh, here was a, a the Operation Pedestal, you see how many uh, people died there. Um, again, just connecting the dots of the ships that were sunk. Um, I kind of veered off here just because there wasn't a ship. I didn't want to get into the land here. But anyway, so that, that's an example there. So it kind of uh, kind of brought things to life a little bit. Um, let me show you another example of that. All right, here's an example of uh, in the Caroline Islands. Um, you know, I got a couple ships here. Actually, I had, I had uh, made some mistakes um, documenting where the uh, ships had sunk on the version one. And by doing this, uh, you know, capturing where uh, during a particular operation or a naval battle, I was, uh, I got the ship's location uh, even closer uh, to what they, you know, to where they really uh, sank. So here's an example of uh, this Operation Hailstone. So basically, uh, uh, many Japanese uh, cruisers, uh, destroyers uh, were sunk. And you can see here, you know, 4,500 uh, people died. So I think, uh, you know, we kind of forget how many people are on these ships. And you can see here, you know, during this operation that, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people died. All right, let's, uh, let me show you another example of uh, documenting uh, the enormity of uh, ships that were sunk. All right, here's an example of, uh, you know, first version of Philippines. Um, a lot of good information, uh, but now uh, by adding the, uh, where the destroyers were sunk, you'll see how, uh, how crazy the, uh, the landscape looks now. So here, you know, just adds a lot more ships um, where they sank. Um, so you can see I have the, the, the blue uh, connect the dots um, indicating um, this was the naval, well, right here was the naval battle off of Samar, which uh, almost 3,000 people died. And then this, uh, this one here, is the naval battle of Leyte Gulf, which uh, over 12,000 died and another little battle hour here. So, um, and then you, you'll start to see these, uh, the kamikaze symbols. So see these red uh, symbols right here. So I put them next to the ships um, that sank due to the Japanese inflicting kamikaze attacks on those particular ships. And in the Philippines is where they uh, began that uh, type of warfare. Um, 
I forget. I think it was the St. Low uh, escort carrier or the Princeton uh, that was uh, the first ship that uh, sank due to a kamikaze attack. Uh, it's one of those two. Um, and then uh, let me show you uh, this. So I'm going to go up into the Okinawa area um, where the, where you can see they, they did a lot of uh, kamikaze attacks on all of the destroyers. So you can see uh, <clears throat> this uh, blue line here is the naval battle of Okinawa. And um, you can see all the destroyers sank. And then the, the, the destroyers on the U.S. side that uh, were sank due to uh, kamikaze attacks. And here you can see the, uh, the Japanese ships that were sank during the battle. All right, so then uh, you start seeing uh, some flight paths, which um, it started off with just the uh, dropping of the uh, the bomb. So here I thought it'd be really interesting to put, uh, you know, where the Enola Gay took off uh, here in the Marianas off of uh, Tinian Island. <clears throat> and so the Enola Gay um, was uh, the one that uh, carried the uh, little boy. And its primary target uh, was Hiroshima, and it took off on this day and time. And so here was the flight path that it took. So it went uh, south of Iwo Jima, and then it uh, went over here into uh, Hiroshima. And then it took the same flight path back. Okay, and then three days later, and I didn't know this, I thought it was the, I thought it was the Enola Gay, but obviously it was a different uh, B-29, took off on the same uh, island, and it was carrying uh, Fat Man, and it was a plutonium bomb. And so this is the flight path. Its primary target was Kokura. And it got canceled because when they got to the, uh, the actual target, they couldn't see the target because of a previous day bombing, uh, a, lot of, uh, a, lot of, a lot of smoke and fire was... Uh, prohibiting them from seeing the target. So they diverted their flight and uh, went to the uh, secondary target, which was Nagasaki. And so then they dropped the bomb here, and then, they, then this is the flight path back. So I thought that was interesting to put on the map here. All right, then you, uh, then you see another flight path. And this was the, uh, this is the Doolittle Raid. So I thought that was kind of cool to put on the map here. So it started off in a uh, uh, the Doolittle Raid. Uh, they were 16 B-25s, and they took off from this uh, task group uh, off of the uh, USS Hornet. And um, so they took off, <clears throat> and their destination were, were various cities within Japan. And uh, you can see here's the path... Um, they, they all pretty much bombed Tokyo. I think uh, there was another uh, uh, squadron or whatever you call them, uh, another group of uh, bombers that uh, went to uh, Nagoya, and then they split off, and then they went to Kobe and Osaka. And uh, <clears throat> everybody joined up uh, here except for one, um, I guess after the... Uh, uh, raid on Tokyo, it had uh, in some engine trouble, so it uh, went off and uh, landed in uh, just north of Vladivostok on a air base, uh, a Russian air base here. And the uh, Russians uh, <clears throat> decided to uh, capture that uh, that B twenty nine and not give it back, or I'm sorry, B twenty five. Anyway, so the, the remaining Doolittle Raiders, um, you know, came here, and then they, this is the flight path that they took to uh, essentially ditch the aircraft. Uh, they didn't have enough fuel to get back to the uh, aircraft carriers, and um, so they came here. They Everybody bailed out. Uh, some of them got uh, captured, and uh, seven of them died, and the rest uh, escaped off. Um, somewhere over here, I forget uh, exactly where, but they uh, 
had assistance uh, <clears throat> and uh, escaped to an area where they then uh, got back to uh, the U.S. Okay, and the last uh, big thing that I uh, captured in this version was the actual path that the Japanese Navy took before and after they bombed Pearl Harbor. So I uh, got these... I got the silhouettes of the uh, the ships, uh, the uh, aircraft carriers, um, and I placed them on, on the map here. And <clears throat> you can see uh, the uh, Japanese Navy, they had three divisions of carriers, uh, two carriers in each division. And you can see that they, they started their uh, sail to uh, Pearl Harbor on November 26. Okay, so... Uh, Basically, I w was able to uh, get their location on specific days. And um, once they got into range uh, on December 7th, as you all know, they uh, took off, uh, they actually uh, took off from two, two divisions um, and they had two waves of attacks. And so what I was able to do is the first wave... Uh, able to document uh, the types of uh, bombers and fighters that were that made up that first wave, and as you can see in the in the yellow uh, flight path, the uh, that wave uh, bombed the northern part of the island, <clears throat> and then the second wave uh, here here was its assortment of bombers and fighters, and um, it uh, b uh, its flight path was on the southern end of the island. And uh, from that, I was able to uh, indicate which ships were sunk. Um, so you have this uh, super dreadnought, the Arizona, uh, a dreadnought, uh, Oklahoma, and Utah. And then I have asterisks next to the three uh, battleships uh, that, you know, they were heavily damaged, um, but they were, uh, they were repaired um, many years later, I think uh, they saw a little bit of action at the end of the war. All right, so here's another area that uh, I, I really enjoyed putting together. Um, so here in the uh, Solomon Islands, New Guinea, um, where you know the Battle of Guadalcanal happened and so on. <clears throat> so if I look at the version, this is version one, if I go to version two, so you can see a lot of nice detail that I was able to capture along with some uh, naval battles, like uh, the naval battle of Coral Sea and the, uh, the U.S. ships that were sunk, uh, along with a, uh, a light cruiser of the Japanese Navy. Um, so here you can see the Guadalcanal campaign and how many people died. Um, and then the, uh, the actual uh, sea battles that took place. You know, a lot of ships... Um, they called this the, uh, I forget what it's called, like the Iron iron Bottom, I think it was. Uh, so all the ships that uh, sunk in this area here. All right, so hey, I want to close out with a few uh, photos of, uh, of the map with a game that was in play. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of what the map looks like with uh, the pieces on there, you know, my whole intent... Uh, during this whole project was never to overtake the gameplay with all this information. But uh, I think uh, uh, all this uh, World War II information that I've documented really enhances the gameplay, especially when you're um, moving around the pieces. Like there'll be times where pieces are actually covering up that information. And then when you're moving, let's say, some fighters, tanks, and so on off of a certain area, you're exposing history. And uh, I think that's uh, one aspect of this project that uh, I have uh, really enjoyed um, experiencing while playing the game. So I hope you uh, like this uh, video, and um, uh, I guess just stay tuned for more in the future. Take care.